been good to you? We serve a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I am excited. We're entering into our 40th, our 48th Holy Convocation. Can you turn me up? This is our 48th year. I am excited. I am only 40, I'm 45. So I haven't been here the entire length. I missed two years. I blame my mother. <laughs> you may take your seats. <laughs> but we are excited to have Wayfaring Ministries here with us. They've been a long time friend of the church. So I was excited when I found out that uh, Pastor Tanya was installed. You were installed on this year, correct? Yes, when they installed her, I was like, let me reach out. <laughs> I reached out to the preacher's kids. We'll talk later. I don't know if your parents put you through any stress. <laughs> Something about being a preacher's kid. <laughs> we get dragged to church. We open up the building. They was here before Bible Gospel Center got here. We know. And they're going to close the building out. Bible Gospel Center be home. And that's what pastor's kids do. You travel along. We become the help. And so uh, it doesn't always mean we end up in ministry. That's not what it means. But sometimes the Lord will choose us. And many times the work that we've put in, the dedication has been part of the work and labor that we do as we're being qualified for ministry. And so I'm excited to have Pastor Tanya here with us. I do want to acknowledge Apostle Brunson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Would you come and share? Come greet the congregation. Want to come greet the congregation? Come. So I'm, I'm going to get her because the Lord told her to go sit down. In the service about three weeks ago, when you see her running around, yeah. they teach us to listen. We'll talk later. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful evening. Praise God to be here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am so excited of being here tonight. I am so excited because I have, I, 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 when you said 48 years, and um, this was my church, too. I, I wouldn't miss a Bible study. I wouldn't miss nothing from five and a half Hazel Street. And oh, I just wouldn't miss anything because it seemed like it was ordained for God to have me to be here. And so I thank God today to be able to watch God working through generation and generation. And we'll have praise God. Amen. We ought to give him a praise. And, and I thank him for allowing this to take place and being able to see it work. Yes. And what happened is, and y'all was already destined to be in these places. Right. Y'all was destined to be in them because what happened is, matter of fact, y'all ain't had no out. Y'all had, had no out because y'all had no other choice, but what happened is because God already planned it for y'all to be able to work the work of God. So I thank God today for Pastor Good. I thank you so much, you know, and for being able to endure everything you had to be able to endure, but I, I believe that God is making everything comfortable. Yes. And that's what we're here to be able to do, just see the, to see the power of God yes. and how he being able to rest his power and authority upon these congregations yes. as this day and time. Yes. So I thank God for you today, and I appreciate it so much. Yes. I appreciate it so much. So uh, Pastor Randall and being able to be here, I know that when ordaining her to be in the position and place that she is. I know she'll carry out the work and the word that God has placed on the inside of her. I told everybody now, I've learned now just to keep my mouth shut. I, I'm not being able to, I'm not worrying about, I'm not making no fuss, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just going to be able to sit down and just enjoy the works of God. Amen. So I thank God for you, son. I appreciate you so much. Come on. <laughs> I 
There's been so many times I've walked into uh, situations, and it's been good to see Apostle Brunson there. And, uh, and I've had times where my dad's not here, but he's always been there. And I can sit next to him and know I got a man with some sense. <laughs> he asked him questions. I'd be thinking them, but he asked him. He'd be like, why, why and why are we doing this? <laughs> like, I'm trying to understand what we're doing in this meeting. Because my father wouldn't go to some of those meetings. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Diane, it's good to see you on today. Amen. <laughs> you want to come and share? You're okay? All right. I just want to give space to you on this, this evening. I want to acknowledge all the ministers that are in the house. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to take any more time. We're going to turn the service over to Pastor Tanya. I see uh, my boys over there. I think they're getting ready to come. Come and do what they got to do. Amen. Amen. Choirs, because they don't want me to sing. They, they, I, I have a degree with that. Not with that mantle. Uh, is, is the praise team here to be able to give us a selection or two? Amen. I see my sixth through eighth grade partner in the house. Hey, Robin! <laughs> hey, man. I said, we started the first group back there <laughs> in true middle school, so I, I'll call her up if all those fail. No. <laughs> hey, man. So we're going to receive, yes, we're going to receive them at this time, and after that, then I will come back, and we're going to break some bread together. Is that all right? Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, 
on five and a half hazel. We were together as a family. And I can remember coming in and we were on our knees and praying and praying and praying. And then when we got up, we knew that the answer was already yes and amen because we found it in the word. God's word has not changed. He said, my word is the same yesterday, today, and it's the same forevermore. So if we know that his word doesn't change, woo, it's the right holy convocation with the right thing. Because if we know that his word doesn't change, then we know that we still got access. Oh God, I'm telling y'all, I have been so stirred from this convocation theme because I said, God, what a theme. 48 years and then a theme, access granted, access denied. I said, whew. But when I understand that where we are as a body, if we are not careful, the very things that God has opened up the doors and gave us total access to, if we are not careful and on our post and remaining in position, that same access will be shut. And see, when we are in a place like this, we've got to know, realize, and understand that God has done some things for us. That God has opened up doors and made some ways. God is causing us to be reminded and remember that I'm still that same good God that I was when I started with you from the beginning. And he said, I don't change. So it's not me that causes the door to be shut. Let's pray because I feel already I'm getting excited. I got to listen. I'm excited. Would you just stand to your feet with me all over this room and just bow your heads. As we go before the throne for these 48 years. Precious Savior and our matchless Redeemer. Father, we're so grateful tonight that we can come before your presence with access, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we will come, Lord God, with our tent doors open, Father, tonight. Let our ears be attentive and sensitive, O oh Father, to the word as it is being spoken, O oh Father. Fill us, refill us, Lord God. Reignite the flame, Father, if the flame has gone dull. But Father, most of all, enlarge our territory on tonight that we might be reminded that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let your word fall on good ground. Let it be seed that produce after its kind. And we'll be honorable, Lord God, Father, because you are to be honored. We thank you, Lord God, that we are grateful because you are great, oh God. And we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you clap your hands for God? Clap your hands for our Savior. Can you clap your hands because he's been good to you? Can you clap your hands because he's not giving up on you, glory to God. Can you clap your hands because God said, I'm the God that will do it over again and again and again and again. That's the God that I am in your life, glory to God. Oh, bless his holy name. You may take your seats. I am excited. Woo! Y'all, listen, good God, I feel like running a marathon right up in here. I feel like running. And I tell you, I truly, I thank God. I know we've gotten all the preliminaries out of the way, but I didn't get the chance to thank God for my husband being in the house on the day. Amen. Many people that follow us on, on social media, they know that that's my baby cake. So I have to say it when he goes out places and they be like, hey, brother, baby cakes. You know, because <laughs> some people don't know his name. Some people know his name. And I told him, I said, y'all got permission because I done called him that long enough. But I, I thank God for him on tonight. I thank God for each and every one of you. Because we're in a time right now that 
people are in a place and in a position where they are looking for the entertainment of church but they're not looking for the depth of it and when I begin to look at this theme I said this is a theme right here but when I realize and understand that everybody don't want to walk through an accessible door some people are comfortable and okay with coming in the door but not knowing that the door is really open see you can come in and fake a funk you can come in and go through the motions of everything that is happening but God said do you really know that I am the God that has brought you through all things I'm the God that sustained you. I'm the God that kept you. I'm the God that preserved everything, not just you, but everything attached to you and everything around you. And when I start to look at the theme scripture verse, Hebrews chapter number four, and I'm reading out of a translation, a contemporary English version, CEV just for a little bit of clarity and and a little more understanding. And we're going to read a couple of scripture passages, but as I was reading this thing, and I want to read your theme verse, and then I'm going to go back to Hebrews chapter 3 to start off there just to break down some things for a minute because, you know, when I start looking at, at, at things like this, something happened. Somebody got complacent. And see, if we as the people of God, and I started even going back looking during the time when two or three years ago when all the stuff started happening with the pandemic and everything, God said, do you realize that I'm the same God that brought you through? I'm the same God that, listen, I was the same God even through that. And I'm the same God that was able to sustain you, but what happened to my people? Hebrews chapter 4, and your theme verse is verse number, I first need to put my, let's get that, it's technology, boy. Technology is something else. Look at that, boom, just like that. You get Wi-Fi and (laughs) ta-da, things just happen and appear. Glory to God, but that's a revelation within itself because when you're not connected, (laughs) you lose access. Thank you, Father. (laughs) Little revelation of a commercial. You got to always be connected to the right source. Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to read it out the CEV verse, the the last verse. Uh, I'm sorry, yours is 3 and 19. 4 is where I'm going to go, but let me go to Hebrews 3 and 19. So your theme verse says, out of the CEV, we see that those people did not enter the place of rest because they did not have faith. I looked at this. I know the King James Version said they didn't believe. They had unbelief. What are we doing? Because God gave me a subtopic for this theme. He said, Tanya, ask the people, What happened to you? What happened to you? I said, God, what do you mean what happened to us? See, whenever we are seeing and experiencing the things that are happening, not in the walls of the church, but outside the walls of the church, God is saying to us as the responsible individuals, what happened to you? Because there is a charge that God has assigned to us that we must fulfill the charge that God has placed within us. But the charge that's within us, here's the thing. If we don't understand the charge first, then we will not be able to execute the charge outside these walls. So it makes it a little difficult to be able to execute a plan and a promise when we have gotten weary of the plan and the promise. See, the same God that turned around and gave the people access is the same God that told them, you will not enter into a place of rest because you don't believe me no more. 
You forgot that I'm that God that brought you through your dilemmas, your madness, your setbacks, your breaking, all of the things that you didn't think that you were going to be able to make it out of. God said, I was that God to you. I did that and then some. I said, God, how when, when I went back to Numbers, and we're going to go there for a quick second in a minute, but I went back to Numbers chapter, I, well, I started reading the whole Numbers because I started reading how spoiled the people of God were because they were at a place that you just expected God to do what he did, but there was no requirement. There was no level of commitment no more. There was no level of, level, level of, um, of dedication. It was just like, well, God, whatever it is, but I'm going to expect all that you got from me. God said, no, as quick as I have the doors open, access denied. What is denied? I'm glad you asked me. Glad you did. Let me tell you what access is first. He said, it is the ability to enter with granted permission. It is access to be in and out of a place as a way of means with liberty. See, when you have a solid relationship locked in with God and there's an expectancy that you are going somewhere, you have to know you got all access granted. You know kids that play video games today, they buy those all access passes so that that way they can participate in everything. See, we get to the place where we only want to participate in whatever is right for our moment at that time. And God said, in order for me to do a full work in you, I want you to have access to everything that I have in store for you. So hold on. So now we read this. We see that those people did not enter the place of rest because they did not have faith. Well, why? Let's go back up in this chapter 3. Let's start at verse number 5. I'm not going to be before you long, but I am going to be before you long enough to find out if you still believe. Because, see, we can, we can go through the form and say we believe, but what happens when we're pressed up against circumstances? What happens when situations back us up against the wall? Are you still that same confident individual that says, God, I still believe you. God, I still trust you. God, I still honor you because I know that you're going to bring me out. See, there's now, because there's been so much of the world and the mixture of the world that tells you that you can be sad, you can be gloomy. I I watched one night, uh, 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 because I like the game show network. So I was watching the Game Show Network. Do you know every commercial that came on was a commercial telling you you need pills for this because you're depressed for that. You need this for that and that for that. You need this for that. I said, well, where are the real commercials? The world is telling you that you are sick and you're not even designated as sick, but you start to hear these symptoms and you'll be like, you know what? That might be me. That might be what I need. The devil is a lie. The only thing you need is his everlasting word because his word is the word that brought you out yesterday, that's bringing you through today, and is bold enough to carry you through tomorrow. So God said, where did my people go wrong that I had to deny access to them? He said, you are not going to enter into a place because your belief has been wavered. Verse 5 in chapter 3 of Hebrews, and I'm again reading out of the CV translation. He said in verse 5, Moses was a faithful servant and told God's people what would be said in the future. Isn't it amazing? See, when you locked in with God, you'll prophesy to your own self. Because see, these were some ungrateful people. When we go back to Numbers chapter 14 and Numbers chapter 10, you're going to see that he had to keep appeasing the people. One thing we got to realize is being kingdom citizens, nobody should have to appease us. We ought to come in entering into his gates with thanksgiving. We ought to come ready to come into his courts with a level of praise. We ought not to wait for everybody to get queued up. You ought to walk through the doors queued up because he said, when I enter into his gates, I come in his gates with thanksgiving. And as a matter of fact, the moment I step into his courtroom, not the physical building, but the moment me and God get a one-on-one relationship and he knows that I'm present, he said, I'm going to show up in the midst and I'm going to show up for them before the music even get queued up. I'm not going to wait for nobody when I understand that he said access granted. Then 
when you see people always in a place of joy, you mad. <laughs> looking at me sideways. <clears throat> but why are you looking at me when I, God said I gave you access. He said in verse 6, but Christ is the son in charge of God's people. Oh, God. But we wait for everybody else to give us instructions. We depended on everything else to make us glad, satisfied. God said, but when you are in me, you are already filled and satisfied with everything that you need. Oh, God. Pause, pause, pause. He said, and we are those people. Wait a minute. He said, we are those people. But then verse 19 said, we see that those people so he's not talking to the stranger. He's talking to us. He said, those people. See, listen, when you have an assignment and know that God has a promise for your life, you better obey with everything that is within you. I don't care what situation comes up against you. You've got to learn how to find your situation in the word and let the word be the matchmaker to bring the promise to pass. Because the word said, I am a healer. The word says that I am a deliverer. When you match the word with the situation, the situation disappears. But the people did not understand understand and know that if I speak the word, hold fast to the word, pursue the word and not be a murmuring complainer of everything that's going on around me, God said I'll show you how I'll give you access again. He said in verse 5 at that verse 6, and we are those people, if we keep on being brave and don't lose hope, some of y'all just need to put an S on your chest. Keep on being brave. <laughs> Listen, superman, superwoman, whatever you need to be, but you need to let the devil know that there is nothing. No, I told him in, in, in morning prayer, when we on the, be on the morning prayer call, I said, I know they get tired of hearing me say it. I said, but there is no weapon creative enough to be formed that will have the strength or the endurance or the elasticity to prosper against you when you are a servant of the living God and you've got all access granted to you. If I got to cry with tears in my eyes, I got to let the devil know there is no weapon that's strong enough to come up against me. I'm crying because when I dry my tears, it's on with you. You better know that I got somebody that told me that vengeance was mine and I'm going to repay for you. So you better not make me cry. As a matter of fact, you better back up off my situation because I've got access. When you are obedient, the word said you will eat the good of the land. Joshua and Caleb knew it. It shouldn't be just two people that recognize that there's good in the land. Because God said anything that I allow your hands to touch, I'll make it good. So verse 7 says, it is just as the Holy Spirit says. If you hear God's voice today. Don't be stubborn. The scripture in the King James said, don't harden your heart. Don't rebel like those people who were tested in the desert. I don't care what place you're in. Don't be like the people that are stuck in the desert because it will cause you to have a denied door shut before you. And God said, in these 48 years, I know I brought you through something. I know I did some things for you. I know there were some promises that were met. So how is it when we come up against circumstances, we forget those things? Whew. God said, so I'm only good when I'm performing for you. But if I'm silent because I'm setting you up for the comeback, I'm positioning you where you can open the door with boldness again. I'm giving you an all-door access plan, and I just need you to wait on me. I just need you to be patient, and if you can't be patient, think on the things that I did for you before. Remember the things that I did, because he said, I'm about 
to do something new in you. He said, if you just tarry, if you just wait and stop complaining. Listen. He said in verse 9, for 40 years, 40 years, Pastor Darius just said 48 years we've been in convocation. So can you imagine if there was 40 years of murmuring and complaining in these 48 years? Can you just imagine sitting next to somebody that complained for 40 years? How many times would you have moved your seat? But see, this is what God is saying with us. I'm looking for you in one place, but the moment I look for you there, you're no longer there because you done moved, because you done got tired and weary of being in the place that I said, just wait right there because I'm on the way. As a matter of fact, if I worked it out before, I'm working it out again, but I need you to stay still and know that I'm God. I need you to understand that I'm working under the undercurrent because I want to give you access. I want to prove that I am God. See, it ain't about us. We think this whole walk is about us. And that's where we get tripped up. That's why they got so complacent. And God said, you will not see the promise. Because you think I got to feed you? You think I got to turn around and give you fresh manna every day of the week? And I'm showing you that I'm the supplier. But you look at it and now you become beggars. God said, everything belongs to me and it belongs to you. But why do I have to prove myself? Because all I want is the glory. God said, we are only the vessel. When we deny him access, we deny him entrance. I'm going to say it again. When we deny him access we deny him entrance because he needs a body he needs a vessel that is fit for him that is ready to step into the earth and said you know what i made it i'm still standing see somebody knows your story somebody doesn't know what you've been through and when they can still see you standing and have all access, then they know that this is something different that's going on. And you don't get the glory for it. They want to know who it is that gave you the strength to get through what you went through. For 40 years, your ancestors tested God and saw the things he did. Verse 10 says, then God got tired of them. Oh. Ooh. I never want to hear that God is tired of me. That's like somebody denying their own child. I don't want you no more. I have no need for you no more because I'm tired of you. I already told you what I can do. Matter of fact, I didn't just tell you, I showed you. And you still don't trust me. You still murmur and complain. You still don't believe me. Oh. He said, you people never show good sense. And you don't understand what I want to do to you. <coughs> Thank, thank you very kindly, sir. I looked up there, I said, my arms are too short to box with God. <laughs> yes, indeed. I said, need a little stretch. <laughs> but verse 10 turned around, he said, then God got tired of them and said, you people never show good sins. And you don't understand what I want you to do. God became angry and told the people, you will never enter my place of rest. 
Now, here's where I got excited because I said, it ain't like we don't know better. We know better. He said, and in this convocation, we've got to leave out this week knowing that we know better. Because God has so much more. Listen, do you know how much God want to brag on himself? But he needs the vessel to be able to brag through. So that means when he can brag through us, that means he's going to show up and do what he needs to do for you just so he can get the glory. What is your situation? It's not a situation because God said, I already got the answer to the situation and I'm going to do it through you. And I want people to know that I'm going to do it through you because I want people to know that I am an accessible God. People around here trying to figure out all types of ways and directions in life. And God said that you got the way with you. Pause and hold on to verse 11 real quick, and let's go to Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter, let's do, let's see, let's do 10 first. Numbers chapter 10. Amen, Numbers chapter 10, and we're going back, we're going to go back to Hebrews, but I just, I just wanted to, I said, it's amazing, they had it good. We have it good. I have to keep saying this. See, when when I look through and look at the people of God, I see victory. You can sense victory even when you know a person's situation. But see, where we get messed up is that we don't allow people to see our victory because we want to wallow in the things that we got that's troubling our brain, that's troubling our heart. And I did an illustration on Sunday, and I shared with them. I said, every time the heart leads, it will cause you to go into a place where you are all in destitute and you're all in despair because the heart wants center attention. The heart wants to do what it wants to do. The heart wants to think the way it wants to think. But God said, when you do an about face and let the spirit lead, the heart ends at the back of the line and the heart has no more control. But God's spirit begins to lead you, guide you, and direct you. Numbers chapter 10. Oh, God. And this was just powerful for me to be able to share when the Israelites went on their journey. Starting at, oh, let's see. Let's look at, oh, I might as well start at verse one. I'm going to try to read it pretty swiftly, but I'm going to tell you, it blessed me. He said, the Lord told Moses, verse two, have someone make two trumpets out of hammered silver. These will be used to call the people together and to give the signal for moving your camp. See, God said, where's the people that are ready to blow? Because, see, I need people whose voices are ready to open up and blow. Because, see, whenever anyone comes and enter into this house, whenever you enter into your own personal house, whenever you enter on your job, wherever you enter, the other day I told them, when you wake up in the morning, you ought to just start clapping your hands because the enemy don't like the sound of victory. I told them, get up and clap your hands. When I read this right here, I said, wait a minute, you mean to tell me you had them to make two silver trumpets and blow these trumpets, and when they blew these trumpets, it was a reminder that some things was getting ready to take place it happened so you mean to tell me we should be blowing out murmuring and complaining because it doesn't attract anybody matter of fact it makes people leave and go the other direction but look at what it said he said these will be used to call the people together and to give the signal for moving your camp verse 3 if both trumpets are blown Everyone is to meet with you at the entrance of the sacred tent. If one is blown, it gets the attention. If two are blown, it means it's time to gather together. It's time to come together in holy convocation. It's time for us to establish some things again. Because see, when I looked up and I began, and I believe I said this before some time ago, when you are calling forth a holy convocation, it is the deal and summons the assembly together to deal with the legal matters. What legal matters? The matters of the kingdom that are at charge at hand for the moment. So we're not just coming together for a church service. We're coming together so we can get the assembly 
assignment to go back out into the land and to execute with victory and to dedicate our lives because God said the vengeance of who I am will bring forth the victory and glory in you. So he said, I'm calling the assembly together because I need to get forth the information that you don't fall in this season. He said in verse number four, if just one is blown, only the 12 tribal leaders need to come together. Leaders can't even come together. You blow the trumpet and three show up. You blow the trumpet and seven got an excuse. He said, how can we execute in the land properly when, when the sound is being blown? He said, I'm talking about access. He said, when you come together in oneness, I'm going to show you. Listen, and it ain't about everybody being in the same place at the same time. Because see, everybody want to be important together at the same time. But I just want to be in the midst. Because if I'm in the midst, God said that I bring glory wherever I come in. So it don't matter who who leads, who follows, God said, just show up and watch me do what I do. He said in verse 5, give a signal on a trumpet when it is time to break camp. <laughs> the first blast will be the signal for the tribes camped on the east side. And the second blast will be the signal for those on the south. Verse 7 says, but when you want everyone to come together sound a different signal on the trumpet but where are your ears attentive to if the man of God is calling an assignment in the house is everybody ears attentive for the assignment because see when we get out there we're going to hear noise in here we ought to hear the sound because when we obey the sound, we get access to go out there. And it don't matter what sound is going on outside, we will keep the sound in our ears to know the direction that we take. Because the world is coming with all types of situations and circumstances to try to gain the attention of those that are being weary and moving off of course. But God said, if you are going to stay in a door with complete access, you got to kill the noise. Oh, God. So listen to this. And I don't want to read all of it, but I got to read this. He said in verse 9, whenever you go into battle against an enemy attacking your land, give a warning signal on the trumpets. Then I, the Lord, will hear it and rescue you. Everything attached to you ought not to be inflicted with anything. And if it is afflicted with anything, because you've got access, whatever is attached to you has to come under subjection because you are accessing the word of God. You are the carrier of the gospel. You are the one that God is speaking to and you are hearing clearly. So you make a sound conscious decision to let the devil know again, there is no weapon. Somebody waiting for their children to be healed. God said, you're the weapon. Speak my word. I gave you access to it. Here's where I want to get to. And I'm going to go back over to Hebrews after this. But verse number, I'll read 13. This was the first time the Lord had told Moses to command the people of Israel to move on. Why are we stuck? Because see, in Hebrews chapter 4, when we get back over there, he said, you got another opportunity to enter into a place of rest. He told us at that very last verse for your theme that you will not enter into a place of rest. 
But because of who God is and the promise that he makes, he turned around and said, I'm going to give you another opportunity to enter into a place of rest. See, when you realize that God is banking on you to win, he's given you every tool that you need in order to be able to prosper in him. So when he turned around and I read this, he said this was the first time the Lord had told Moses to command the people of Israel to move on. Now listen to this. Verse 14 said, Judah and the tribes that camped alongside and marched out first carrying their banner. Nashon, son of Abin Aminadab, was the leader of Judah tribe. Nathaniel, son of Zor, was the leader of the Iskar tribe. And Eliab, son of Helon, was the leader of the Zebulun tribe. The sacred tent had been taken down, and the Gershonites and the Merorites carried it, marching behind the Judah camp. Pause real quick, because I'm going to keep on reading. What I want you to get ready to understand and see is that there was a continued flow. There was an order. There was a working together. There was a camaraderie at one point coming together, because the people understood we're more fierce together than we are separated and when we go into rest together we begin to charge and cause other people that are around us to enter into a place of rest because he's established rest for all of his people verse 18 Reuben and the tribes that camped alongside and marched out second carrying their banner Eluzar son of Shadur was the leader of the Reuben tribe. So you mean to tell me nobody got jealous because the one that was leading? It, it, listen, because when I read this, thinking of the churches today, I said, God, this would have been a whole heap of confusion. Because people would have been all over. The, well, why, why they leading first? I got the banner. I did my banner. My banner looked better. Why can't I lead first? God said, do you realize and understand that I'm calling you together at a holy, solemn assembly? I'm bringing you together that when you enter into one place, you are more dangerous as one body than a bunch of separated individuals. And listen, listen, listen. He said, whoo. He said, whoo. Look, y'all, I feel like just running down the aisle. He said in verse 18, Reuben and the tribes that camped alongside it marched out second, carrying their banner. Elisor, son of Shedeor, was the leader of the Reuben tribe. Shelmiel, son of Zerushadai, that might be a little exaggerated with that pronunciation, was the leader of the Simeon tribe. And Elasif, son of Duel, was the leader of the Gad tribe. Next were the Kohathites, carrying the objects for the sacred tent, which was to be set up before they arrived at the new camp. So somebody even had to be the forerunners to say, God, I'll take it, but I'm running for the tribe. I'm not going to be out there by myself, but I'm running with the tribe because we're going to make sure that everything is set up right. I know as PK kids, we show up, we got to set up, we got to break down, we got to do the in-between. God said, what if the, the charge was set on everybody, that everybody did their responsible things? Because here what I saw was everybody was supporting everybody. You want to talk about access granted. Let a body, somebody yelled it over there, unity. He said in verse 21, carrying the objects for the sacred tin, which was to be set up before they arrived at the new camp. Ephraim and the tribes, listen to this, that camped alongside and marched next, carrying their banner. Elishama, son of Aminahab, was the leader of the Ephraim tribe. Gamiel, son of Pezora, was the leader of the Manasseh tribe. And Abanan, son of Gidani, was the leader of the Benjamin tribe. But look at verse 25. He said, Dan and the tribes that camped alongside it were to protect the Israelites against an attack from behind. So, 
somebody got to be okay with holding down the back of the line. Because see, when you go in forth as one unit, you move as one body. And it don't matter if I got to cover the back because as long as we get to the destination and the door is open when we get there because we did it together, God said, I will keep opening up the door over and over and over again for you. Listen, he turned around and said, They were to protect the Israelites against an attack from behind, so they marched last, carrying the banner. Oh, God. So you mean to tell me the last shall be first and the first shall be last? Because if I'm last, I'm really first because I'm holding down the back so that I can make sure that the next person get to their destination. And it don't mean that I'm being left behind. It just means that I'm being saturated so that I can look. The problem is we don't have each other's back no more. The doors are closing. He said, you won't have no rest because you don't even know how to defend the one that's next to you. You don't know how to give the one next to you the kind word. You don't know how to pray for them and pray for them for real. You don't know how to love on them when they are hating on you. You don't know how to be obedient when the pastor says, just go and do a great deed to them. And don't worry about the repayment because God said, I got my eyes on you. Take the back. Because you're still going in. Stand in the back. It's okay. Because when they get through, (laughs) you coming through too. You won't be left behind. But you got the behind. He said, oh God. Pagio, son of Ochin, was the leader of the Asher tribe. And Ahira, son of Enan, was the leader of the Naphtali tribe. This was the order verse 28 in which the israelites march each time they move their camp every time you come in the house you ought to be moving as one sound did not they say it in ezekiel he said when the wheel was in the middle of the wheel he said when the wing sounded it sounded like one voice one sound that's how you get access see we keep wondering well god why why are you not showing up Are you, have you shown up? Because God said, what happened to you? That was his word to us. What happened to you? Did you leave? You could be sitting right in in the room, in the building. But did you leave? Where are your thoughts? Where is your support? Where is the altitude that God is looking for from out of your life? Go go back, go back, go back, go back to Hebrews. Uh. (coughs) Hebrews chapter 3. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 3. And we left off. Oh God. Verse 12. He said, my friends, watch out. Don't let evil thoughts or doubts make any of you turn from the living God. I said, wait a minute. I got to guard my thoughts? Because access can be denied because of my thinking The way that I think can hold me back from experience the best that God has for me. (coughs) Here's what I like. He said in verse 13, you must encourage one another each day. And you must keep on while there is still a time that is called today. This bless me. Oh God, I'll do it tomorrow. 
God, I'll pray later. God, I'll deal with that situation when they come to me. God said, but do you realize you got to deal with stuff today? Because the enemy doesn't care about later. He wants you today. And if he's after you today, you got to settle the matter today. The scripture says, if you hear his voice today, don't be stubborn like those who rebelled. Verse 16 says, who were those people that heard God's voice and rebelled? Weren't they the same ones that came out of Egypt with Moses? Weren't they the same ones that was marching together that we just read about in Numbers chapter 10? The same ones that went out in pairs when they heard the trumpet and they went out and allowed one another to lead one another to bring them to a place. Those people? We got to be careful because lest Satan gets an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. His device can be something as simple as somebody cutting you off and you got a whole attitude for about 20 minutes. He said, I'll use any avenue to shut the access to your door. So verse 17 turned around and said, who were the people that made God angry 40 years? Weren't they the ones that sinned and died in the desert? We don't want to be those individuals that end up missing it. I'd have been in church 48 years, 50 years, 20 years, 12 years, 10 years, and miss it. That is the saddest thing to hear. Oh, God, that I did all of that and missed my mark. Look at chapter 4 real quick to Hebrews. This is the confidence as we get ready to wrap this up. He said in verse 1, and I love this. He said, the promise to enter the place of rest is still good. I got excited to hear that, Pastor Darius. Because when I heard at the last verse, in the last chapter, that you will not enter into my rest, God said, but do you know I still got a plan for you? I still have hope that you're going to get it. The promise to enter the place of rest is still good, and we must take care that none of you miss out. Take care of yourself. Not naturally, spiritually. Do a spiritual checkup and ask God, God, am I good today? Am I all right? How's, how's my spiritual health? Did I roll my eyes at anybody? Did I get out done with a circumstance, a situation that I know that you already did it before? Check me spiritually, God. What's going on in me? Read the blood pressure of my spirit. Is it too high? Is it low where I'm about to bottom out? He said in verse 2, we have heard the message just like they did. But they failed to believe what they heard and the message did not do them any good. How many more messages we going to hear? How many more convocations we going to have? How many more people are we going to miss out on? Because even our families are waiting on us. They're waiting on us. He said only people who have faith will enter the place of rest. Oh, God, do you have faith? Do you believe? Because if you believe and have faith, God said, I'll show up for you. Faith without my works is dead. Use it. It's your tool. It belongs to you. But verse 3 at that latter part says, God became angry and told the people, you will never enter my place of rest. God said this even though everything has been ready from the time of creation. I said, wait a minute. Pastor Darius, 
Even though he told me I'm not going to enter, you made a place for me before the foundation of the world was ever spoken of. I had a place. I was a... Oh. I've been watching and seeing all the kids that's going to college and they've been announcing the schools that they're going to. They got a placement. Their name is on the roster. They brought the merchandise. They wearing the, the merchandise. They're representing the team, the school that they're getting ready to spend the money and do all of the things to bring forth the education that is needed. But yet he, we are kingdom citizens. Are we representing? We've already been enrolled in the Eternal Academy. He gave us placement. We didn't have to score higher than the next one because he said, I got a room for you. He already designated us and told us that your GPA is already set up. Ooh. I could picture you on the dean's list because of everything that you've experienced and going through. I know you went through studying some hard nights, but in the midst of it, when the test came, you passed real well. I gave you access when they wanted to take you off the roster, but I said that name stays right there. God said this. In fact, somewhere the scriptures say that by the seventh day, God had finished his work, and so he rested. Verse 5 says, we also read that he later said, you people will never enter my place of rest. Why did he keep saying that? He said, I need to know that you are with me. Verse 7 says, much later, God told David to make the promise again. Just as I have already said, if you hear his voice today, don't be stubborn. He said, make the promise again. Make it again. See, because if you don't think right now from everything that you've experienced and gone through, this is the legal charge for you right now. Make the promise again. God, I will enter into your rest. I'm ceasing from everything and everyone that's around me that's causing me to not operate in my victorious state. Cre recreate in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Let my mind be renewed. See, when you're talking about access, you got to speak the right words to get access. You got to have the right code to get access. You got to get the access to the key to open the door. See, you don't just get access just by standing there. Verse 10. On that day, God's people will rest from their work, just as God rested from his. We should do our best to enter the place of rest, so none of us will disobey and miss going there as they did. Verse 12, God's word is alive and powerful. I told people, I said, I am the crazy type of person that I believe everything his word says everything because he's proven and shown it to me over and over again that his word can be tried you could stand on his word because his word doesn't change circumstances and people and opposition those things change but God said I change not so I'd rather defend and back up on his word any day his word can cut through our spirits and souls and through our joints and marrow until it discovers the desires and thoughts of our heart. That's what he's after. 
if I can find out the thought and the heart of what you think, I'll determine and know if you want full access or not. Because your heart will never lie. It will always tell the truth because it wants what it wants. If your heart is panting after the things of God, it will show it and demonstrate it. And God said, access is yours. I'm not going to go to chapter 14 of Numbers, but I want you to know and realize this. Those people, <laughs> those people, they found a way to complain about everything. And Moses, God told Moses, he said, what is going on with these people? We will not be the murmurs and complainers. We will be the foundation that people can come and stand upon because we are giving them a platform where God can show himself mighty. Everything that we do when God said, what happened to you? Answer him. What happened? Because he needs to know who's present. Perilous times are coming. We are seeing and witnessing the world not getting better, but it's growing gravely worse. People are going to be looking for access to anything because they're looking for it now. We got to show them the right access. We have to give them that opportunity to say, here, this is where you're supposed to be. 48 years of carrying forth a charge to be able to encourage people, to be able to pour into people, to be able to carry assignments. Don't take that for granted. You were built to execute, to have access. I want you to stand to your feet all over this room. I pray to God today that we will recognize how much authority we have because you never want the door to be shut and you have no rest. Amen. Bow your heads all over this room. Precious Father, God, we say thank you, O oh Lord that you have given us, Lord God, the ability to see, O oh God, to understand, Father, that you have graced us in this season, O oh Lord. You have given us the blueprint, O oh Father, to recognize that we can rest in you in safety, O oh Father. We desire the access, Lord God, that we can continue to keep the doors open that those that need to come through, O oh Father, might enter with thanksgiving, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. If there be any unbelief, Lord God, Father, we ask that you would touch the heart of your people, O oh God. Father, bring them back to remembrance that you have done, Lord God, exceedingly and abundantly above all they could ask or think, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for moving mightily, Lord God, over this holy convocation, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that you are continually proving and strengthening your people, Lord God. You are undergirding us, O oh God, with the extension of your hand, O oh God. We pray tonight, Lord God, that your plan is still being worked in the lives of your people. And we give you access, Lord God, to these vessels, these earthen vessels, oh God, on this night. Move, Lord God, like never before. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Glory to God. I never take it for granted if there's anyone that's in this place that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. That's where your access starts. It gives you that open portal that gives you a whole full benefit package that causes you to know that there is someone that loves you greater than you love yourself. If that is you, we bid you to come on tonight. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. We pray for every soul that is bound and stricken and lost and confused on tonight, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that we are the balm in Gilead, oh Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we are the help in the sanctuary, Father. And we pray tonight that our families will be covered and protected under the blood of Jesus, oh God. That everything, Lord God, that you have in store for your people, oh Father, we thank you for the full manifestation coming to pass even now. And we thank you, Lord, for granting access, Lord God, to those, Lord, that are in dry places, oh Father. Those that are burdened, Lord God. Those, Lord God, that are going through health issues, oh Father. We pray tonight, Lord God, that you would be their rescuer and their deliverer, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for drying up every sickness and disease, Lord God. Father, every abuse, Lord God, we thank you, Father, that it comes under subjection to your word on tonight, oh Father. And we give your name the glory for it, the honor. And we thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. We're going to turn it back over into the hand. Yeah. Just wanted to wipe the hand clean because I know it's cough, but I, it's funny. I always think when Apostle, when we were younger, and I don't claim allergies, but I know sometimes when I get in places and I think, I don't know if I had fabric softening or something on my cloth, but my eyes begin to water and tear. So, but he always used to say, if we sneezed or did anything, he said, listen, if Father God, if that was anything more than a sneeze, you cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so you didn't even have time for the full sneeze or anything to come out. You just knew you better say something. So open your mouth and say something. Glory to God. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise all over this world. Amen. Amen. We heard a tremendous word on today. You just may take your seats. And she was hitting it right on the head. I don't know how many times you heard her say it, but access is denied when you're given to murmuring and complaining. And I know people say, well, I got a promise. I got a, a dream. I got a vision. That's fine. That's something the Lord has promised you. But that don't mean you got a taste of it. I've seen where God, and you see it right in the scripture where God said, then I will do it for your children because I couldn't do it for you. If you look up the word murmuring, just look it up in the Hebrew. The word means to lodge over. It means to stay in place. That means your forward progress has now can't come to a stop. That's a dangerous place to be. And, you, and I've watched Christians, God's going to do it. He's going to do it. But then your next word is, but what about? And the, the doubt and the fear and the complaints and why God? Why am I here, God? <laughs> why am I going through this? Well, why not you? Why not you? People say to me, when are we going to see the miracles again? When, when are we going to see, see the, the, the dead raised? Y'all want to see God's glory? How many of y'all want to, how many of you are ready to be Lazarus? Somebody got to die. <laughs> I signed up for the whole thing. Whatever you want in my life. If I got to spend the night in the lion's den, then that's where I got to be. I read these scriptures where Peter and, and, uh, and John, or was it, was it Peter? The, the two, I can't remember which ones it was. They were in the jail, and they were worshiping and praising God. In spite of their circumstance, in, pri in spite of their situations. Pastor Tanya said, how long do we have to go before we start to trust God? How long? Can you imagine being in a marriage and two years, you still don't trust me? Five years, you still don't trust me? Ten years, how, 
How long do I got to fight to prove my love? <laughs> God said 40 years. That's what you said, right? 40 years I proved it to you. You still don't trust me. What a word that we heard on today. Listen, there's some things, before you leave here tonight, there's some things you're going to have to adjust in your thinking and in your heart. If you're going through a circumstance tonight and you're saying, Lord, how long? Lord, how? Lord, when? Lord, we got all these questions for our God. Your answer tonight has to be, Lord, I trust you. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm experiencing, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how painful it might be, Lord, I still trust you. If they take the keys to the house, if they take my car, if I go to court and things don't work out in my favor, Lord, I still trust you. I'm going to finish with this, and I'll be done. The, the Sabbath day, when God says he rested on the seventh day, the scripture says that it was through Moses that he established the Sabbath. That means we went through a a Adam and, and Seth and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob until we get to Moses. And then God says, now put the Sabbath in place. Why would God wait that long to tell man to come to a place or a day of rest? Because the Sabbath was about remembrance. It's not about resting. It's about remembering what God did when he brought them out of Egypt. If you spend one day out of your week remembering what God did in your life, can we just take one day? Stop resting. Spend that day thinking about God. All the things that he's done in your life, all he's done in my brother's life, and my sister's life, the testimonies I've heard year after year after year, then we wouldn't be in a place of, Lord, I still trust you. 40 years later, we heard a good word on tonight. Don't just be excited. You got to mix the word with faith. With faith. The scripture said, mix that word with faith. Lord, I trust you. I shouldn't have to pray that prayer every week, every month, every year. Lord, it's just part of my DNA now because you have proven yourself to me. He's proven himself strong. If you're still here today, that means he has kept you. He has kept you. Kept you. Last September, I went through a pancreatic attack. I don't get to talk to y'all that often. I just talk to you now. We're going to talk to <laughs> Went through a pancreatic attack. My sister, she, she called me that morning, Sunday morning after church. She said, I had this dream I want to share with you. She had this dream. And I won't go through the details of the dream, but I was attacked by a pack of wolves, and she thought I had, they had killed me. And then I made it to the car, and she thought I was dead, but she's like, but you made it to the car. She said, I don't know what the dream means, but she said, when I woke up, she said, I heard God say, Satan has come to sift him like wheat. And I was like, that's not a good, I'm so tired of fighting. <laughs> Why are they fighting me so hard? <laughs> I stayed to myself. I'm quiet. <laughs> that night I went home, went through a pancreatic attack. And I remember driving to the hospital, got checked out. I stayed in the hospital for several days. They ended up doing a surgery on me, removing my gallbladder. And I'm laying there like, Lord, I didn't expect to see myself in this place. Then I receive a call from my wife, and she says to me, she says, in the middle of the night, I received the word that Vicki Gordon, the Lord woke her up and said, pray for Darius. She said, Darius who? He said, Darius good. He is in the hospital. So when she gets the phone call, she said, I already knew you was there. I was already praying. See, it, it doesn't matter what you're going through. God reminds us that I got something already in place. You're going to be okay. I got a lot of stories. I burned all the skin from elbow down. They thought I had third, deg third degree burns. I'm completely healed. You see my arm today. You don't have any signs of burns. I've walked away from car accidents. I got so many testimonies. At what point do we begin to trust God? At what point? He's proven himself. Make those adjustments in your heart tonight. Lord, I'm not going to get nervous anymore. I'm not going to be confused. I'm not going to be afraid. Lord, I trust you because you've proven yourself to be faithful. We serve an awesome and a faithful God. He's awesome. Awesome. 
Awesome. I'll be here all night telling y'all testimonies. But I'm stirred. Can you hear the word? Stop complaining. Stop complaining. God is desiring to give us the fullness. He said, but your mouth causes it to be cut short. I've gone through too much to get 30%. I've gone through too much for 50%. I want the whole loaf. I want 100%. I want 100%. We're going to take our offering on this evening. We do a uh, cash and check. I'm going to give just the, the preliminaries for this. We do cash and check. If you want to do it electronically, you could do it through Cash App. Our, our, our TVs aren't working. And so I'm just giving you the information. If you want to do Cash App, do dollar sign Bible Gospel Center. If you want to do Zelle or you want to do PayPal, you have to use the church's email address, which would be at Bible Gospel Center, uh, Bible Gospel Center at gmail.com. So Cash App is dollar sign Bible Gospel Center, and Zelle and PayPal is Bible Gospel Center at gmail.com. We're going to bless the Lord on this evening with our offering. Just as we're reading in the Old Testament, the tribes will come together. They will bring offering to the temple as required by the Lord. And so let us bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you for Wayfaring Ministries, this church that you have established in our area, in our region. We thank you, Lord, that this has been a staple in our community, a staple in our city, a staple in our state. We thank you for Apostle Bronson and God's hand being upon his life. I pray, Lord, that your strength will continue to be upon him, strengthen his body, in the name of Jesus, even as he said he's taking his rest, I pray that this be a time of strengthening for his mind and for his soul. We thank you for Pastor Tanya as she has taken the reins. I pray that you strengthen her hands and establish her in her place. Strengthen her voice in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for those that have joined their hearts to her. I pray that there's no division, that there's no strife in the house. In the name of Jesus, we pray for unity in the house, that the vision will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And now, as we give our, our offering to you, Lord, I pray that you receive it as you did with Abel. Do not deny, Lord, that we give it with a grateful heart and we give it in faith. In Jesus' name, and if you agree with that prayer, say amen. 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 We may pass the baskets.
Holy Convocation envelopes. This is a special offering we do one time a year. Uh, we always look to the Lord for the amount that we're willing to give. If anyone would like an envelope, our ushers in the rear, they have some. Um, we don't receive them on today. It's something you can turn, turn in at any point that you feel led. But it's a special offering. So we ask that you pray first before you, uh, you turn them in. Ask the Lord what amount that you should give. Amen. Amen. Um, I think we're going to close our service on this evening. Um, Reverend Richard Furlow, it's good to see you here. I just want to acknowledge you. Is there anything you would like to share, say? You have anything? You want to speak? Yeah, come, come. Come. Amen. Apostle Brunson mentioned five and a half Hazel Street. Listen, Apostle Furlow, you remember him from five and a half Hazel Street. <laughs> <laughs> we can bring that whole building and sit it right here. <laughs> hey, man, I tried to get here earlier, but I had a wake that I had to officiate. And so, but you know, my heart is here. This is my church. Hey, Amen. But the Lord did show me something just very quickly, very quickly. And so what I hear the Lord, what I've heard the Lord been saying during, this is... A, and I'm trying to be here as much as I can, but there's the scheduling is tough this year. But this is a groundbreaking convocation. Pastor, the word that you brought, I was trying to contain myself so I wouldn't run around. I said, you'd be looking at me, who's that flipping in the back, <laughs> acting up? But this is a groundbreaking. What God is doing in this house is to establish his government for the expanse. I saw an expanse, not an expansion. I saw an expanse. And oh, I feel his glory coming. And so there, there is the expanse of his glory, the expanse coming upon the house. And so God is causing his government to be established. Ministers of the house don't resist don't resist his governmental order because he's going to crown you with government so that God can have something to sit upon. He comes upon his government. The Ark of the Covenant is not a representation of his presence. It's a representation of his government because therein was the Ten Commandments. His glory, his presence was upon the Ark, not in it. Apostle I want to say, and I, I don't know what's going on. I, I know we saw each other a few months ago and just a quick handshake, and I quickened when I shook your hand. But I'm going to tell you what God's going to do with you in this. Can I just, and then I'm going to sit myself down. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what God is doing with you in this season, Apostle, and I don't know what you have going on, but I saw a work in Cromwell. God is moving you to a, to a position of administration. And I saw another work in the Cromwell Hartford area, as well as in Stamford. And so God is gonna cause these men that you have poured into, they're going to be an expansion of the ministry. And so have your ear towards Cromwell Hartford, and then have your ear towards Stamford. And I also see works coming in the South. God, don't think network, don't think network. Think family ministry. God is raising up men under you. And so he's going to have you in a place of administrating so that you're going to be a father to those who are going to pastor these works. Amen. You're not finished yet. You're not finished yet. God's going to strengthen you. Amen. Let me sit myself down. But I feel glory in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't get to retire from ministry. We don't. He just moved you to a different role. That's what God does. Amen. You got anything? I'm just checking. Just checking. Amen. We are going to dismiss. I'm going to ask Pastor Tanya if you'll come and do our benediction on this evening. Thank you, Lord.
We got service on Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. I expect Bible Gospel Center to be here. And we expect Wayfaring Ministry to be right over there. <laughs> what time your service start? 7 o'clock, y'all be on time. You said 7 a.m. On, on, on Sunday? Sunday morning. I was like, okay. 9 a.m. <laughs> Y'all be there 9 a.m. on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> Our next service will be on Tuesday. We got Pastor Tony Clark. He'll be coming in, and I'm excited to hear him as well. He's an awesome teacher of the word. And he texted me already. He was like, you sure you want me to go there? And I was like, go all the way there. All the way there. Pastor Tanya went all the way there on today. Amen. Amen. If you catch yourself complaining, check yourself. Say, Lord, I repent. That means my mind is changing, going a different direction. I'm not going to complain. I will not complain. But I will thank you for all that you're doing in my life. Come on, Pastor Tanya. Amen. Before I have two quick things. Um, first, um, if you could bring that to me, I just want to be just a blessing to you and your wife and thank y'all for the invitation this is just a little relaxation gift thank you. where you can <laughs> just relax thank you. happy 10th year anniversary to you Amen. happy anniversary and we are so excited i'm gonna tell you something i'm i'm like pastor darius and i said it earlier I believe everything God's word has said concerning us. The day of, and I'm not going to go into the whole full story, but I just, I just kind of lead a little quick little piece. On the 25th of March, the service of installation took place where Apostle passed the mantle to me to be able to pastor Wayfair Ministries. And as we just said, you don't retire, you don't go anywhere you just take on a whole nother mantle. So the confirmation of even what the man of God spoke to apostle is so powerful and so on point. And at that service, as I'm walking down the aisle, the very first thing before I walked down the aisle, God had told me that I will not be a babysitter to the people of God. Apostle's theme has been for these last 36 years, birthing a generation of leaders. And I asked him with the permission, would we be able to take off birthing and be the generation of leaders? Because we've already received the information and we need to be grown enough now to hold fast to the words that we have heard for the longevity that we've been in relation with God. So in doing that, I talk to God because I've seen God work so many miracles in my life, Pastor Darius, I've seen God open doors, I've seen the impossible that didn't seem like it was possible, possible. Before the installation service, my husband and I were in Stop and Shop parking lot in Hamden. While we're in the parking lot, we never go out the side of the parking lot going out to Skiff Street. We always, because we live back Hamden, so we always go out at the light of Dixwell Avenue across from Walmart and turn to go back down into Hamden. But that day, for whatever reason, we were heading towards that way and when he stopped to fix something in the truck, and I looked up. I said, babe, there's our church building. He said, what? L.A. Fitness. He said, I, I saw the look on his face like, you know, here she go again, this girl. <laughs> she just. But I, I said it, and when I said it, I felt the confirmation in my spirit from God. After that, ordination takes place, I said, I'm going to reach out and call the guy and see what the situation is with this building. Mm -hmm. I called. The guy said, well, we only want a medical center really here, a doctor's office, you know, to do the necessary things for studies and tests and all the other stuff. I said, okay. He told me what the cost was of the building. He said, shall I still continue? I said, absolutely, still continue. So he thought I was going to be moved by the asking price of what he was looking for for the building. Nine million dollars is what he said. That following Sunday, I told my sister, I said, 
I'm going to put this online. I want the people to be able to see what God is getting ready to do. Now, I was already standing out there because I said I believe his word. Well, do you know when we left from Sunday service, my husband and I was home taking a nap, sleeping real good, and we got a knock on our door and phones was ringing like crazy. I said, well, what in the world is going on? The person who had already was in position to purchase the building found us and said, I saw you put up on the screen the building. He said, but I couldn't believe you put up that building. He said, because I saw through that ordination service that you were at that God told me I had been looking for you since last Monday to tell you that the building was yours. I said, I said, wait a second. He said, have you seen the building yet? I said, yeah, when I asked the guy to send me the blueprints, the realtor who was showing the, the, the building, he sent me the blueprints. He said, do you want to walk in the building? Four hours later, after I showed it on the screen, we were walking in the LA Fitness building, looking and observing the land. I told Apostle, I said, the legacy of what you put forth, I said, we are going to be able to not just meet the needs of ministry. I said, but we're going to be able to go out and service the people of God in ways that his heart desired for the past 36 years. We just watched the numbers drop and drop and drop. We just watched the last couple of days the favor of the construction people that have been coming in. We just watched just earlier today the people that God has already set up and put in place for the manifestation of this to happen. So on July, we will be walking into that building. <laughs> Access granted. You better stop that right there. Access granted. This is why when I was sharing and what Pastor Darius just reiterated, you don't have time to complain. You've got to trust God's word because the one thing that I know, I said, I'll believe his word before I believe a lie from the world. See, I done been through enough stuff to know that God said, I am still your supplier, and if you put everything in my hand and trust me, he said, I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. So I don't give you room to complain when every time something comes up, find my word and back it up with my word. He said, back everything up with my word. I stopped complaining, I stopped murmuring, I stopped blaming. See, when you start, self-evaluation is the best evaluation. Don't wait for nobody to call you out on your stuff. Call yourself out on your stuff and say, God, check me. Help me check me and then let me get myself together. Find myself in your word and let me keep it moving. Because do you know God said everything, the cattle on a thousand hills is still mine. And it belongs to me. Man of God, apostles going down south in, in a, couple of, a couple of weeks to be down there for a couple of months. They're already searching out, looking for a shepherd to be able to have that family set in just what you said. They're not looking for a, what, what, what you call it, when you're trying to just get a, a bunch of churches. They looking for information. They're looking for the father. I didn't even read numbers tonight and address it to, to speak it, but in Numbers 14, and then he turned around in Hebrews, he said, where are the fathers? See, when you got instruction and sound information, God said, I will open up all of me to you. Nothing will be hidden for you. Pastor Darius, I believe every miracle, every sign, every wonder is coming forth back into manifestation because when you're ready for access, God said, I'll show you. I still today, I get mad with people. I said, when they don't believe that God can do the impossible, 
I get out your presence because I don't even want to be around you because the word and the things that I know that I've seen, I'm not reading a storybook. I am executing what God said. If I did it yesterday, I am able to do it again today. So if you don't believe the way I believe, move out my way because I don't need nothing or nobody to block what God has already said can be yours. Everything. Everything. All right, let's go because I'm, I'm excited. I told him we, we walking from Treadwell Street down the Dixville Avenue in July. I said, it's going to be a parade. It ain't Freddie Fixer. It ain't St. Patty's. It ain't Cinco de Mayo. It ain't none of those parades. It's a Jesus parade because we're going to walk believing and letting them know that miracle signs and wonders are still happening in the land. Oh, my God, Jesus. Woo! Hey! We let the world get enough stuff to have advertisement. It's time for us to advertise. Woo! Woo! My God! Woo! All right, all right, y'all better stop. Y'all better, y'all. I tell you to just put a praise on it. I'll put a praise on it. Praise brings access. You better go ahead and blow that. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are our glorious provider. You are our way maker, oh God. You are our treasure in these earthen vessels. Glory to God. Let the excellency come forth, oh God. Let us not be weary in our well-doing. For we know, oh God, that our due season is right now. All access granted, oh Father. We thank you tonight that you dispatch your ministering angels. Go before us to our destinations, that everything might be safe and sound and in perfect peace, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for enlarging our territory, oh God. Thank you for covering everything under the blood of Jesus. Thank you right now, Father, that you will keep and preserve us, oh God, until we come together again. Father, we thank you that every yoke is being destroyed in our life. Every burden, Lord God, is being removed and suppressed, oh God, that it would no longer return. You are our savior, our redeemer, and most of all, you are our supplier of every good and perfect gift. We love you unconditionally, and as we leave this place, whenever your presence, Father, go with us to our destinations, that everything, Lord God, might be sound, oh Father, in you. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Continue to allow, oh God, this holy convocation to go higher and higher, oh God. Let the demonstration, Lord God, of your presence be known, Lord God, in this place, in each and every vessel, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless Pastor Darius, oh God. Bless, Lord God, Pastor the good, oh Father. Bless, Lord God, the first family, oh God. Bless every minister, leader, teacher, child, oh God. Bless, Lord God, every member in this house, oh Father. And we thank you for the overflow like never before. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. You are dismissed.